Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we're doing a quick video on CJAA TDI EGR deletes. So I'm using a CJAA as a demonstration engine and I guess the car here is a CJAA as well. But this should be applicable to any 2009 to 14 North American TDIs. So it should cover the Passats. The only thing that'll be a little bit different will be the high pressure line that comes in around to the um, engine intake, but it should be quite similar. So you should get the rough idea of what's going on. Uh, we're going to start this off just saying this is informational use or educational or for diagnostic purposes. Um, removing the EGR is a, or against the federal law in some countries. Um, so even if your state, province, territory, or county doesn't have emissions testing, it's still a federal law to not remove emissions devices, but I'm not the fun police, so you do what you want with information. Um, I'm doing it on this engine on the ground, so it's obviously not going into a car, so this is just educational purposes. So we went over in the last video about the high pressure and low pressure EGRs, so we're gonna see some options here for removing both of them for diagnostic uses. Starting off, high pressure, it's considered high pressure because it's fed from the manifold before the turbo. It would feed into your manifold if it was here. Um, so let's go to this car that still is intact. So the turbo is back here. We have a steel pipe that basically a U shape over here, and then jumps in here at the EGR valve. So we got multiple ways that we can delete the high pressure EGR. Okay, so the easiest way it's just strictly a tune. You're going to require it either way. So just plug it in, load up the file, and you're good to go. You don't have to touch anything on there. And not, the high pressure EGR isn't cooled. Just strictly a little U shape over to here. So there's no cooler to leak. So really, there's nothing really wrong with that. So for whatever reason, maybe you want to clean up the engine bay a little bit. You just want to get rid of that pipe, or maybe the flex broke. The next easiest way is just strictly blocker plates um, so the four cylinders really only have two different styles we got this narrow one and this little bit longer and fatter one so this is used on ALH and BEWs and apparently fits on here nicely so you can find these on your favorite online retailers of pretty well anywhere and it also bolts onto your turbo so that's blocked off and away you go um, they usually come with some pretty chintzy uh, gaskets so this car or this engine was already deleted somebody installed a delete pipe with a cork gasket and then used an OEM steel gasket so they double gasketed it and these cork gaskets I'm not a huge fan of so just use a OEM steel one especially where it's going to be a lot of heat okay so installing a blocker plate here isn't good enough you need more room in this area maybe you're putting a cp3 pump in or you just don't like the look of the EGR valve and your anti-shutter valve the next option is installing a race pipe here and a blocker plate on your turbo so that looks like this. It's just a chunk of alum or yeah, aluminum bolts on. Many online retailers also sell that pipe. And so that would be the difference. So you have a lot more room here, a lot more room here to get down into your oil filter easier. The issue is that under anti-shutter valve could possibly prevent a runaway. Um, some kits also sell a little race pipe to go in between here, so you can still keep this. It just depends on what kind of style you want. So that's quick and easy. The high pressure EGR is the easiest to delete. So next we're gonna do the low pressure. As far as the low pressure, we've got two options that I can really think of. One's extremely easy and one is not really easy or it's as easy as you wanna make it, I guess. Um, so since we've got our high flow down pipe that would go here, we no longer have room for our 
EGR gas or uh, EGR filter that would bolt right there. So you can install a little blocker plate there, which of the two blocker plates, this would be the narrower and shorter ones that are found on the BRMs. And apparently the CJA EGR coolers. So quick and easy, you bolt that on there, you flash your tune, that valve's gonna stay shut. Nice and easy, but the issue comes once the cooler starts leaking. So the second option is removing the cooler completely. We have two issues. The first, which is the easier issue to solve, is the coolant. So it comes off of the plastic housing off the side, goes to the bottom line at the cooler, and then this upper one goes to your heater core and makes you some nice warm coolant. So we're gonna have to join these two together to bypass that cooler. Some kits come like with a 90, a plastic 90 that looks like you use it for your garden hose. And a lot of the times they're not meant for heat and they just melt. So try and get a nice brass coupler. The other option you can use is just bulk heater hose. Three quarter inch is quite close. It'll fit onto here. You can just make a nice line, comes up and then oh, put your end on right here. And then you, that's just one last joiner you have to worry about. And then if you don't have the pipe here anymore, you don't really have to worry about any hot exhaust hitting it. Just quick and easy up to here. And the cooler's bypassed. The biggest issue is going to be this pipe. This is the one that comes off the cooler. This is the cooled exhaust. And it gets fed into the low side of your turbo, which would this would be from your air filter. So that would be why it's called low pressure. It's obviously low pressure. It picks up the exhaust after the DPF and feeds it into the inlet of the turbo. It's a really cool idea. And it's supposed to be nice, clean exhaust gas. Um, but when it DPF cracks, it doesn't stay so clean anymore. And when it gets full of coolant, it doesn't really work very well either. So the issue, so this is bolted down here nicely, but this is just a slip fit. And I'll show you what I mean on the bench here in a minute. Okay, so this is my broken turbo that I've, not off this car, it's off a different CJA. Um, so I've got the pipe off of here. So that would be your cooler, and that's your inlet of the turbo. So you might be thinking, hey, that's the same blocker which it does actually fit there nicely. But the issue is this is just slipped into this rubber grommet. So I had two hands. It just falls out. So that's not gonna work unless you can jimmy rig this up somehow. If you wrap ratchet strap, or not ratchet strap, zip ties or something like that. That's not gonna work, that's a terrible idea. You're gonna suck unfiltered air into your turbo and then you're gonna wreck your turbo. So you've got two options. You can get the kits that sell expanding rubber plugs that I think you would see them on boats where you put them into a hole. It's just a big chunk of rubber, a round chunk of rubber with a bolt and a nut through it and you tighten the nut and it basically expands the rubber. So that would, fit in there real nicely so as far as measurements the ID if you're gonna leave that rubber grom it would be about an inch and an eighth maybe and if you're going to take that rubber grommet out which I think would be the best idea that's going to be inch and a quarter the part I don't like about that is you've got a bolt or a nut flopping around up in here. So you better red Loctite that assembly if you're going to use an expansion plug. Because that's the last thing you want to do is suck a nut through there. The other option, which I think is a lot better, would be modifying this inlet. So as far as modifying it, you're going to have to make friends with somebody with an aluminum welder of some sort, whether it's a TIG or a spool. 
on a MIG welder, but you can just weld a cap in there or on it. So that should plug it off. It's not high pressure, so we just gotta test it with water, nothing drips out. Um, so then that would just sit like that and then you're good to go. So that's probably the best way to do it if you wanna remove the cooler and all that. But yeah, you're definitely, you wanna make sure there's no weld splatter or anything on the inside. And you're, again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure there's no leaks because you're gonna be sucking in unfiltered air through your turbo. And this way, if you do modify that, you can keep your original inlet pipe that goes on there. So you're not having to worry about modifying your air box intake. So that would be the less easy way of deleting that. Okay, so that should be everything covered off for the high pressure and low pressure. So hopefully the video helped uh, temporarily bypass these for diagnostic uses only, obviously. So yeah, stay tuned. I've got a couple more CJAA videos coming out here shortly. So again, thanks for watching and hopefully it helped.